So our goal today is we're going to learn basic SOLIDWORKS. We're going to learn basic SOLIDWORKS. Now everything we've talked about so far of line types, different projections, two-dimensional versus three-dimensional, that's all going to be helpful. Okay, but let's talk about the fundamentals within SOLIDWORKS that we've got to get squared away first. Within SOLIDWORKS, there is what's called the sketch. <clears throat> the sketch is an image, which is typically two-dimensional on a plane or flat surface. The sketch is used to construct or modify solid bodies. Okay. Now the sketch itself doesn't actually change the solid or create the solid. The sketch is, what the sketch does is it provides the information that SOLIDWORKS needs to create the shape or object or modify the shape or object that we're after. Now I know that maybe doesn't mean a whole lot yet, but we'll get there, okay? Now, <clears throat> if we talk about how do we, you know, so if the sketch doesn't create the object, the solid object, then and how do we create the object? Well, we're going to use what we call some extrude features. Right. So what the extrude features do, so the extrude features, there's what they call, there's what's called the extruded boss or base. Right, the extruded boss or base. And what that does is it uses a 2D sketch um, 2D sketch of a cross section to create material in the third dimension. A lot of times I'll, I will simply call this an extrusion. And just for short, I'll call this an extrusion. Reason I call this an extrusion, and, and we'll draw this in a second, we'll, and we'll see it in SolidWorks. But if I call this an extrusion, so if if I go to, um, I don't know, we'll just go to uh, Google here. Thanks, Bing. Yes, Bing. Show me, show me Google. Thank you, Bing. All right. So we go to Google, and if we do. Um, Let's do extruded pasta, for example. Images of extruded pasta, and let's say, let's look for, a, so you can see an extrusion head here, right? So there's some extrusion heads where they're basically pushing that pasta dough through this shape, cross section, right? Cross section. So how do you get these different shapes of pasta? How do I get just a cylinder? Well, I just push pasta dough through a circular hole in a pasta maker and that pushes that dough through the cross section is the circle and you push that pasta through in a in a third dimension so we, we should be able to find this animated right? so i move okay so how do we get these crazy shapes well they're just going to push pasta dough through the cross section Right, and then that um, 
that generates the third dimension. So we'll see this and, and there's corkscrew there, right? So you can also push it through and twist it. That's an extrusion. Right? As we use this in food processing. We can use this on metal production also. You can, it, you can push aluminum through a cross-sectional area at a high, high pressure. You push the, the, the metal through and it'll create a shape in that cross-section through the third dimension. That's, that's what we call an extrusion. SolidWorks is going to do something very simpler, similar to that. That is the, the common way uh, that we, uh, one of the simplest ways we generate material in SolidWorks is through this extrusion feature, an extruded boss or base. We draw the cross section and then we basically push material through in the third dimension in the shape of that cross section. There's also uh, the extruded cut. And so we've got extruded boss base where there's an extruded cut. And the cut basically, um, very similar to the extrusion, extruded boss base, it uses a two-dimensional sketch of a cross section to remove material in the third dimension. All right, so last few times we talked about orthographic projections. We talked about that's the two-dimensional view looking right straight at the object. And that's what we'll do here is we'll draw what does that cut look like if we look at it straight on from an orthographic projection. What is the, the shape, the cross section of that cut going to look at like? And we'll draw that and then we'll use that cross section then to cut to remove material in the third direction. Okay, so that's that is the simplest kind of the simplest crash course in SOLIDWORKS that I can give and, and I just prefer to at least make sure we've got an understanding of these three terms. There's about five terms I want to mention here. But these are kind of the three most important. Sketch is where we we're going to create an image that we're going to use then to create solid material or modify solid material. Now there's a variety of things we can use sketches for, but the simplest two things I can use sketches for is the extrusion features, the extruded boss or the extruded cut. Okay. Now, if you've used Inventor, I know some of you guys have maybe come through a pre-engineering program at some of the, the technology centers. I know they'll use Inventor a lot of times. There's a lot of similarities here. There's some differences. You'll probably pick it up a little faster. Um, if you've had experience with AutoCAD or, or similar two-dimensional CAD, I'm sorry. Um, I don't wish that on anybody, right? but uh, what I would suggest is uh, most everything you know about using AutoCAD, throw that out the window when we're talking about SOLIDWORKS. Very little of that applies. That's a two-dimensional CAD program. Great for making two-dimensional drawings. Doesn't help us here. We're making three-dimensional models and the computer will generate those two-dimensional drawings for us. We, we don't have to make those. That's just silly. The computers can do that for us now, right? Um, that's the way SOLIDWORKS works, if you will. It, it makes the three-dimensional models for us. We make, we make the three-dimensional models. It will generate the multi-view drawings of the object after we've created them. Okay, so let us, I'm going to share screen again. Actually, before I do, I'm going to, I may regret this. Okay, perfect. I was gonna say, let's uh, share. Okay. So I switch back to me. That's not necessarily necessary, but let's go to SolidWorks. Because I don't figure you need a little thumbnail of what's on the document camera here. Okay. So I've gone to SolidWorks here, and, and you don't have to follow along. I just want to show you some basics. I'm going to turn you loose today on a tutorial, right? And the tutorial is going to walk you step by step through how to do things. Okay. Uh, so we'll talk about how that works in just a little bit. But let, let me at least show you some basic things here. Okay, so if I have just clicked on new up here, you can go up to file new, but I've just clicked on new. And I'm just going to create a new part. Right? And it might ask me some things because it may be the first time you've, it'll be, for those of you out there using this, it's maybe the first time you've used SolidWorks. So it's probably going to ask you some questions about, uh, um, you know, what, uh, 
uh, templates and things like that, maybe you can't, but just, just hit okay, hit accept. No, you don't need dynamic help. I'll, I'll be your dynamic help today. Uh, if it asks you, do you want to use dynamic help? Um, okay, so SolidWorks is, appears to be somewhat ready for us. And if yours is giving you some error messages, that's okay, I'll, I'll get you caught up. You don't have to follow along with me step by step here. <clears throat> All right, so what do we want to do? Let's make something, shall we? Um, SolidWorks navigation, okay? You've got, if you hover over in, this is what we call the manager over here on the left. I'll write that down in a second. <clears throat> but the manager is, is what they call over here on the left. Uh, that's where you can control the properties and the options and change things. Now I'm hovering over Right now, there's a front, top, and right plane <clears throat> over here, right? So if I wanted to, you know, what, what do we want the front of the part of the object to be? Well, that's up to you. you got to, we talked about that, right? It, it's up to you what you want to be the front. Probably the most descriptive view should be the front view, but it doesn't have to be, okay? Um, but if... For example, let's say I, I draw on the front plane. So I'm gonna select the front plane here and <clears throat> I'm gonna go up to sketch. So up here, there's, there's different tabs. You kind of have a ribbon up here with different tabs. I'm gonna to go to the sketch tab. It was on evaluate, I'm gonna to go to sketch. Now in the sketch tab, I've got a button for sketch. Right? Now, and, and let me, I'm going to unselect the front plane. So I'm just going to click out here in the white space where there's nothing right now. So I have nothing selected. I want to show you what happens when I just click the sketch button. All right, so I click the sketch button and, in, and notice the manager over here on the left has changed. And it's giving a message in the yellow. It says, and I know it's small for you guys to read. I'll read it to you. It says, select a plane on which to create a sketch for the entity. And that just simply says a bunch of stuff of select the plane. Select what plane? Where do you want this sketch to live? Again, a sketch is a two-dimensional image. Select a two-dimensional surface upon which you want to sketch. And it's saying, hey, right now I've got three planes. Which one do you want to sketch on? If you want another plane, you're going to have to do something different. But these are what, these are what we got right now. I'm just going to draw on the front plane. So I'm going to hover my mouse. Um, now, important discussion. If you're like me and you grew up playing video games and you just want to get in there and start clicking things, um, proceed with caution. I just, I'm telling you from experience, try to break that habit when you're using SolidWorks. Hover to, before you click, if you're like me, you keep that left finger on the, that left mouse button or you keep your right, your index finger, you keep that on that left mouse button, right? Because you never know when you need to push it. <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> Don't click until you know you, you have what you want. Hover to before you click. If you're afraid you're just going to instinctively click, pull that mouse finger off. Hover to what you think you want to click. Let it highlight and then click it. Right? And I, I'm, I'm just telling you from experience. That was, that was a hard habit for me to break because I grew up playing games, first-person shooters. That, that will not serve you well here. All right. So notice what it's done. It is open sketch one. And I'm on the front plane. You can hover over the front plane. You can see I'm looking right at the front plane. It's automatically put me orthographically or normal to the front plane. So right now I can draw sketch one on the front plane. What do I draw? Well, whatever you want. Um, there's tools up here, right? And you can hover over and it says, well, this is, that is the rectangle tool. And then there's a line tool and there's a circle tool. So let's just draw a rectangle. So if I click on rectangle, that changes the manager over here on the left. And now I've got different options for rectangles, different types of rectangles I can draw. Most of the time I just draw this, this first one here. See how it's highlighted right now? The one that says one, two, where there's one and two on different corners. Right now it's saying, if you wanna draw a rectangle, the first click's gonna set one corner and the second click's gonna set another corner. If you wanna change that, or you don't wanna, if you wanna put the center and then a corner, that, however you wanna do it, there's options. I'm just going to arbitrarily out here somewhere in space, I'm going to click a corner. All right, so I've left clicked one time and I can move my mouse and you can see what it's doing. So the second click now will set the other corner because that's what it's over in the manager. It's saying, hey, if you 
click, this is what we're going to draw. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm going to utilize board space behind me. Let me grab an eraser. Something. Let's expand this. So I'm, I'm about to write something important here. I'm trying to get a feel for where my area is. That's not bad. Okay, I can't go past that. Fair enough. There's something called. Releasing the tool, releasing the tool. Notice right now over here in the manager on the left, it is still on the rectangular tool. That's as big as I can go, right? It will, if I just click out here, it's gonna draw another rectangle because I'm still in the rectangular tool. If you just draw one rectangle and you're done, release the tool, okay? You have to release the tool. You have to tell it you're done drawing rectangles. That is the escape key. The green check mark. Um, there's a variety of ways you can do it, okay? You can select the tool again. If you selected another tool, then it would automatically release the one you have right now. But you, you, it will continue to draw rectangles until you tell it to stop. That's my point here. Release the tool. Green check is a good way to do that. Okay? <clears throat> awesome. Green check. No longer drawing rectangles. Now, um, I'm going to, we can put dimensions on this thing. I can resize it. I can change it. I'm just going to leave it for right now. Your tutorials today are going to walk you through making things the right size. Okay, for right now, I'm just going to draw something. I'm going to exit the sketch. Okay, so there's up here in, in the top, there's a button for exit sketch. So I'm just going to exit the sketch. <clears throat> now I've got a rectangle and there's really not much else to it. Okay, <clears throat> now how do we move around? Well, your mouse gets you a long ways. If you will, you can roll your mouse wheel and that will zoom. Go slow. You're not changing weapons. <laughs> Don't do it fast. Go slow. Those of you that are gamers or, or anything like that. Um, it will zoom into wherever the cursor is. So if you zoom in, it will try to center right at the cursor. So if, if I zoom in over here, right, it's going to zoom in over there. It'll zoom centered into wherever your cursor is. So if, what I would suggest, if you're trying to zoom into something, put your cursor where you want to zoom into, give it two clicks, reposition, give it two clicks, reposition, give it two clicks. That way you don't zoom past something, okay? Your, your, your zoom point will change if you're not careful. Um, so you're rolling your mouse wheel, move you in and out. If you push the mouse wheel in, right, that's called button three, right? Button one's left, button two's the right, button three is the middle. If you push the mouse wheel in, it's, it acts like a button, right? And so it gives you a different function. If you push the mouse wheel in, hold it down, then you can move the mouse while you've got the button pushed down and that will rotate, right? So you can rotate that way. So zoom in and out, rolling the mouse wheel, push the button in, push the mouse wheel in and that will rotate. You can do that also with your arrow keys on your keyboard. Arrow keys on your keyboard allow you to rotate. So there's a variety of ways. If you want to control the rotation, you've got some options up here, right? So there's, you hover over this one says view orientation. And if I drag that down, then I've got some different things. If I want to just look at the front, I can do that. If I want to look at the top, I can do that. If I want to, and, and this one here, I've got some options. I've got an isometric, Diametric or trimetric option, the different parallel projections I can pick. Right? So if I want an isometric option. So you can see again, I've drawn this square on the front plane. There's the top plane and the right plane. Okay. 
All right, that's quite a bit. Let's do something with this guy. So I'm going to go to features. And notice there's the extruded boss space that we talked about earlier. If you have row raises, it extrudes a sketch um, you know, using a, in a, basically in a third dimension. All right. So I'm going to click on extruded boss space. Now, I don't, right now, I don't have anything else selected. I did that intentionally. If you had sketch one still selected, it's automatically going to say, oh, I'm going to make sketch one. I'm going to extrude that out. But notice what it's done here is it said, well, there was nothing selected. So it wants me to either select a plane on which to sketch and then it'll let me draw the, the, the cross section or select an existing sketch. Well, I have an existing sketch. I'm just going to click on that because that's what I want to extrude. So again, I'll hover to that, make sure I'm selecting the right thing, click on that. And it says, all right, well, I'm gonna make an extrusion of this sketch because that's what you selected. <clears throat> and then I can control how much or how little that goes. There's, I've got these arrows here, I can push those. You can go on the graph, this is what's called the graphics area. So on the right where you actually see stuff, this is called the graphics area. On the left is the manager. Right now it's the boss extrude manager because that's what's selected is boss extrude. In the graphics area, notice there's this arrow here. You can, if you hover to it, see it goes orange. You can actually click and drag. I, I don't recommend that. You don't have, it's not, you have no precision that way. If you just want to rough it in by view, that's fine, but there's no precision. If you actually want to control and say, well, I want this to be exactly one inch, you can put one inch over here in the manager, actually give it a, a value. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna hit check, I'm gonna hit okay, because you know, kind of like we talked about releasing the tool, when you're done, hit the green check is a good way to do that. Now that's generated a block, okay? So we're drawing a square, roughly a square cross section. Now it's probably not exactly square. Now <clears throat> we can fix that. Notice that sketch one is gone. It's, well, it's not gone, it's still there. It's inside now boss extrude one. I can open this up and see sketch one is there. I can right click on that and it gives me some options. If you hover, this top one says edit sketch. So I can go back and change it. I said earlier, it's probably not exactly square. We can fix that. I can fix that actually. Um, the easiest way, if you want to actually control the size of something, Easiest way to do that is a smart dimension. So now I'm editing this sketch. I'm gonna grab a smart dimension. And I'm gonna click on this line. Now I can only do this while I'm editing that sketch. But if I click on this line, and then I drop that somewhere. So I wanna dimension this line, I'm gonna drop the dimension right there. Right now it's almost two inches. I don't want it two inches, I just want one. I hit the green check, it tells it it's done, it rescales. And then this, so I've done the horizontal side, let's do the vertical side. Drop that, put that one. <clears throat> when you're done, exit the sketch. Later on, we'll talk about locating the square so it's fully defined. I, I think that might be lost when you guys are this. So some of you guys understand what I'm saying. Right now, we'll, we'll talk about location of the square later. Okay. Right now we're just talking about the size of it. Now I've got a cube. Again, I'm pushing my mouse wheel in or using my arrow keys to rotate it. You can see roughly a cube. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now we talked about, that was, that's an extruded boss base. Let's do a quick cut and then I'll turn you guys loose on a tutorial today. Questions for me so far though? Okay, so sketch, extruded boss base, Let's talk about extruded cut, release the tool, all things that are important. Again, the manager is this stuff over here on the left. The graphics area is the stuff on the right. Okay. Those are the basic terms we're going to know. Let's do a quick cut. So uh, now that I have solid shapes, I, that will unlock in the features now these cut options. Now that there's something to cut, I have some cut options. So I'm going to make a cut. Now, <clears throat> remember the first time we started with the sketch first. You can start that way. You can start with a sketch and then use the sketch to make the feature. The tutorials actually do it a little different. They'll say, well, create the feature and within the feature, draw the sketch. Tomato, tomato. 
both ways work. Let's, let's do it like the tutorials are gonna walk you through. So if I go to extruded cut, all right, if I click on that right now, I don't have anything selected. So if I just click on extruded cut, it, notice what it says. The manager gives me this message. It says, select either somewhere to draw a sketch for your cross section of the cut. All right, select a planar, planar face or edge on, on which to sketch the cross section. Or if you have a sketch already in mind, select that. I don't have a sketch already. I need to make it. But I need to tell it where does this sketch live. A sketch is going to live either on a plane or a face. Right? Well, I've got faces here in addition to the top, front, and right plane. Those are still here. I can pull them out in the fly feature. So notice the top plane is right there in the middle. I could draw on the top plane if I wanted to, but I'm okay just drawing right here on this top face. So I'm gonna select this. I just have to give it a flat surface. So now sketch two is on this surface, All right? So sketch two, I selected this face up here. So sketch two is on this surface up here. Now, I don't like, I could draw, right? I could draw right there and you see what it's doing. It's drawing it on that face. And it doesn't have to be on that face. I can, um, I'm going kind of quickly here, but I, right, I can, it doesn't have to be limited to that face. It's the plane containing that face. Now it's kind of hard. I find it kind of hard to draw um, when I'm not looking right at it. So if you go to view orientation, right, up here in the graphics area at the very top, there's this magic button here called normal to. Control eight looks like we'll get you there also. That way you look right straight at it. Gives you the orthographic projection of whatever it is you're working on right now. All right, so I don't need this circle this big. In fact, I'm just gonna, right, if, if I just select that circle, the outer edge of that circle, I can hit the delete key and it goes away. I'm like, I don't like that one. Let's make another one. So I'm gonna grab the circle tool. Let's talk about the circle tool real quick. Again, um, two options in this one. First click can set the center, second click sets a radius, or you can set three points on the edge two different ways to, to do a circle. I'm just gonna drop the center in here somewhere. I'm gonna do a center radius one. So just drop the center in here somewhere and then just arbitrarily draw it a little bit. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna talk a lot about locating and dimensioning object or features and sketches. We don't have to get too in depth today. Your, your tutorials will get you started today. But if I wanted to control the size of something, and I'll just grab smart dimension, click on the outer edge of this circle that says, hey, I want to dimension this circle. So first click says, what do you want to dimension? Second click, just drop it out in space somewhere so it's out of the way. And let's say, uh, you know what, a half inch is just fine, 0.5 inches. Oh, that's 0.05, that's too small. I can double click that and it opens back at 0.5. Perfect. Now, if I want to locate that circle, what I can do is I can click on the circle and click on one of these edges and say, I want a dimension between these two entities. And then just drop the dimension out of the way somewhere. So let's put this at 0.5. And I can do the same thing here again. If I, so now I've dimensioned basically the horizontal dimension. If I want to click on this and then click the bottom line, and say, well, the distance between these two is also 0.5. And that will center that circle in the middle of this block. Okay. I'm going to exit my sketch. And that's the cross section that I want to cut. Now, it doesn't look like it's done anything. You have to actually rotate it to see it. So, again, I'm going to push my mouse wheel in and rotate. And you can see what it's doing now. Right now, it's going to cut all the way th through. My monitor just went blank there. There we go. Now, right now it's going to cut all the way through. I'm going to tell it, well, I don't want to cut all the way through. We're just going to cut a quarter inch, so 0.25. And you can see it's only going to cut a little ways through. I'm going to hit check. And now it's only going to cut a little ways through. Okay. You can always go back and change it. If you want to cut the whole thing out, Steve, I don't want to just cut a quarter inch, cut the whole thing out. All right, well, go in, right click on it. Just about anything you've created, the beauty of SolidWorks, because it's a modern CAD program, anything you create, you can go back and modify. So just right click, edit. There's an option right here for edit feature. If you want to edit the sketch, the circle itself, that's this one. I don't, I just want to edit the feature. I want to edit the whole. 
So that's edit feature, right? I can tell it cut through one inch. That cuts all the way through. I can also see where it says blind here. There's options. So blind is just wherever you're located, just blindly cut this distance. But if I just want to say, you know what, just where whatever is there, cut through all. So I see there's a drop down menu and I can control how it cuts. Cut through all means it's just going to cut whatever it finds. So you get a hole all the way through. Questions for me? Okay. I know a video game is software, right? This is software. It's, this is not exactly a video game, but it's like a video game because it's software, right? So I understand that watching somebody else play a video game is not the best way to learn playing a video game, right? So the best way to learn this is just get in there and just play with it and get your hands dirty and, and get to it. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do at this point. Now, I will say one thing, okay? And I'm going to show you how to get to the tutorials. And, um, let's move me out of the way. All right, so let's see. That is welcome to SolidWorks. Okay. All right, so I'll show you how to do this in a second. I just want to put it in the video. So again, go on to the home, welcome to SolidWorks, under learn, and under tutorials. Okay. Now, what we're going to do today, what I recommend rookies start out with is lesson one. You're welcome to these two. We're not going to do these in this class. Um, the introduction, the AutoCAD and SolidWorks, we're not going to do those. I don't, I don't care. We're going to start at lesson one. Now, a few things about these tutorials. Notice it's giving us an amount of time. What I will tell you is ignore that amount of time. That doesn't mean it. I, I could probably go through and do the tutorial in 30 minutes. I know what I'm doing, okay? Ignore the time. For rookies, don't pay attention to the time. Take as long as you need to. Another reason this class meets as long as it does, okay? Um, take as long as you need to. If you're done in 30 minutes, awesome, good job. There's no extra credit, it's not a race. Take as much time as you need to. Um, if, you're, if you need to finish up on this next time we meet, that's fine too. Seriously, take your own time. Um, just like playing a video game, you know, what's the first thing they have you do the, on this complex battle simulator, three-dimensional battle simulator or three-dimensional game? They run you through a tutorial, right? And it's like, how can I get through this as quick as possible? Try to not have that mentality here, right? Um, it's going to give you a lot of information. Some of it you need, some of you don't like, like this one here. So it's, it's telling you, here's what we're going to do, okay? Here's what we're going to do. Um, on the tutorials, if you do not see steps, right? And that is one with some text, two with some text, three with some text. Hit next. Feel free to read it. Right? I don't expect you to look at, at this text here and know what the heck to do with that. Right, that's, that's, it's just explaining to you, here's what we're gonna do. If I go next, see here's step one, step two, step three, it's, it's telling you how to do that. And if I go next again, that's gonna say, oh, here's what we're going to do. You don't have to do it from this. If you can look at this and do everything you need to, that's fine, but that's, that's not the point. Again, if you don't see steps, one, two, three, et cetera, hit the next button down here now it's going to walk you through here's how we're going to do what they're you know here they're saying we're going to create an extruded base here's how you do it does that make sense that's it's a common thing i'll try to catch you guys as i walk around and answer your questions i'll try to catch you if if you're trying to from this trying to make this you can it's fine i'm just i'm going to tell you hey just click the next button it'll tell you how to do that because right? there'll be some steps they want you to do that you'll miss up once. last thing to mention uh, guys, I've been teaching this class for 15 years. Okay, I want you to. I want you to. I don't want you to struggle, but I do want you to kind of wrestle with this, right? I don't. You're not going to learn it if you don't kind of get in there and get your hands dirty. I'm serious about that. However, um, you know, if you find yourself really like three, four minutes in, it's like I don't know what the heck this is saying, and I can't figure it out. I can't find it. Ask me. Okay, seriously, ask me. I'm, I, and please understand that you, you're going to be, you may get really frustrated and, and, and it's like, and, and I'll walk right up and say, well, it's this button right here. 
and, and that'll be it. And, and I will do my best to be, right? Um, it, just please don't be mad at me, right? <laughs> it may just be one click. And it might also be, okay, we're gonna have to back up five steps and, and let me see if I can save you some work and it might take me five minutes to try to get you where we're supposed to be. Maybe you missed something three or four steps later and I'll try to correct it for you, right? Especially if you get well into it and it's not worth restarting, right? So sometimes it will be, you know, and, and every once in a while, and, and I won't say every once in a while, I always plan one of you is going to stump me with something that I've never seen before. Right? But a lot of a lot of it's like, okay, well, it really all you do is just click this button and, and we'll fix this and it'll be fine, right? So just kind of keep that in mind, right? Um, questions, comments, complaints. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna stop recording here. Okay, so I'm gonna stop share, I'm gonna stop recording.